Yep. Oh. Turns out leak number one was just loose. There we go. Got that tight. Now we'll see if that keeps leaking. We figured out what line was leaking. Uh, he's up there taking it off on top. Basically what the line is for is it looks like a return for the brakes because this is an open center gear pump for the brakes. And I got a little valve body that's on the side of the frame over here. And that basically, when you push the brakes, it's got to put the fluid somewhere when you max the brakes out, shoves it back up in the tank. At least that's what it looks like. So anyways, I took that off down below. Nick's taking it off up here and then we'll get some fittings and uh, make a new hose for it. And then after we get that done, we'll grease the inside a couple of things and then we're gonna wash the wash it really good. But we'll look around and see if we have any other issues that need to be done. Do you unhook down there? Yep, you should be able to pull it out. Let's come on something over here. Oh, it's right here. There we go. That is a weak hose. It's like super light walled. Well, it looks like there's right. two different ends on it. We've got a six to an eight is what it looks like. So on hydraulic fittings, they don't go by like half inch, three quarter, 10 millimeter, or well, some, some metric, but for the most part, what they do is for the sizes, they call them like an eight and six. And so for example, eight is actually a, five, a half inch. A six would be like a three eighths. Um, a 16 would be one inch. So if you can remember those, it helps. But what the fittings are on that is those are actually a JIC fitting. And uh, I try to keep assortment of random stuff here. Here we go. This might be the one. So that's a six to six. So if we had a three eighths hose, that'd be, and we don't need a half inch, honestly. Oh wait, what do we got here? But that's a straight, nope, that's not right. We don't have one. Let's go out and confirm. Make sure that this. We need a 90, just the way that they're set up in there. You need to, you can't do a straight. That's perfect. Okay. Well, I gotta go in town and uh, see if I can get a, a line, what I, well not a line, but a fitting. Should check to see if we have any 3 8 hose. There we go, 3 8 Yep, so we, we have some 3 8 hose. All right, well that's all I need to do. Go in town and get a fitting. Fun. There's wear marks right there, so that'd be where that went. Uh, opposite. Huh? Your small one goes on top. Oh, is this one on the bottom? Yeah. Got it. Let me just go up here then. All right, we got the hose back on. He's gonna wash it all out. Since the cab's up, it's easier to wash it all off, but there's a lot of grease and oil and dirt, all that combination right there. So clean it up and then uh, see if that helped fix some of that leak. So, yeah, fun. Any oil so far? Keyword yet. It's old, it'll leak oil eventually. Yeah, I can shut it. We just got the last harness that I'm aware of for the Big Brute. And this little harness is so that we can, when you push the button in the cab to raise or lower your wings, it needs to disable your auto boom height, 
Well, the harness that we have, I'll plug it in there, then that way it tells when you hit the button, it'll send a signal to disable it. Right now, if you raise and lower it with auto boom on, it fights against you and it doesn't turn itself off. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Now, luckily for me, that uh, good old buddy at Raven sent a little bit of a chart here so I can figure out which pin to put those little pigtails in. You got these little cute wires right there. Now each one of these wires has a little crimped end on it and that crimped end goes into one of these right here. Now what I don't remember, he told me, and this has been a couple weeks back, of which one of these harnesses I need to plug it into. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going through the pins and finding out which pin has not been taken, the slot, because they don't have a wire in it. And I'm going off of his chart here. It has pin 11, pin 14, pin 22. You get the idea. And then as I'm going through these harnesses, I'm finding out which pins are not taken. And if I find the right harness that doesn't have all those pins in it, then I'll plug them in. So yeah, it's a little bit of a fun learning curve. I've got to take uh, wire cutters, cut the zip tie right here so I can re remove the loom like so, as you can tell. Fun. And then uh, I've already removed those screws on both sides. And then I just got to wiggle it apart. It's actually kind of a nice connector. I actually really like these. A lot of ones, they, they fight you. These are actually not fighting me. Okay. So now I pull this side apart. And on this one, I got to find out are all these taken? And if they are or not, you get the idea. So 13, 14. So that one actually is taken. I don't think it's that harness. I'm pretty sure it's this one right here. Okay, why is that one taken? Yeah, you can see what's fun about it. Anyways, I'm gonna be here for a while. I think I got the pins figured out on the wiring. Um, we talked to a guy at Raven, told us what we need to do, and hopefully I got that correct. So we gotta bring it out. Now I gotta actually tie it into the solenoids and figure out which ones lift and raise, and then we can just unplug and plug them together. It's super easy to do, but just gotta eliminate stuff. So Nick's going to take the brood out and uh, we'll wing it out, get it figured out and uh, yeah, hopefully that little harness will help it uh, feel a little easier to run. Okay, it's a little easier to talk to him on the cab when I got this thing. So anyways, uh, looks like looks like the wires are hooked up correctly to the solenoids. And he's now, he actually might be going through the, the uh, buttons to see if it actually turns him off when he's doing the auto boom height. That's probably what he's messing with right now. But anyways, they work. Good. We're in the side-by-sides, Dad. Uh, he's taking one, I've got the other one, Nick's in his pickup, and we're heading down to the building to grab the headers because, uh, well, we need to get them out. Now, the reason why we got three vehicles, you know that pee cleaner that we built? Well, we got to get that thing out of the way to get the headers out, and so once we get that out of the way with Nick's pickup, we'll use the side-by-side to hook on the headers and uh, pull those things home. And then Nick can get back to his house and start building on his house because they're working on this foundation. So, yeah, pretty cool. These things are awesome. And they cruise. Love it. Okay, let's put a receiver hitch on his truck. Hi, Nick. Hi. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. He's a very talkative person right now. So we really need to get this out of here because I think we're gonna be hitting it with the headers. Maybe not. Well, we'll see.
Okay, you ready? Okay, we're gonna wake these uh, beautiful combines up. We got B spine and Clifford. Now, which one's which? Uh, we have Clifford. I think Clifford's in the front. This one's got a number two in the back. Yep, there's B spine. Okay. I smell mice. Oh, those things are nasty. Yep, there's a mouse turd right here. Oh, those things are horrible. Clifford's turn. All right, hopefully these batteries are good. Careful when I'm backing up so I don't uh, smash the auger into the building. And you guys are probably wondering why do we put the augers out in the middle of the building? Well, if we don't, you can't park these combines close together, and then if you move them up and out, they don't hit anything. So just getting them out is fun. All right, here you go, Dad. Okay, let's see what happens. right in the spot that uh, Big Bud made 40 years ago for that purpose, to make sure that the unloading spot would clear. Wow, that's thinking ahead. What we gotta do with these combines is, of course, grease, make sure there's fuel, check the oil and everything in it, um, you know, those simple things like that, and just kinda go over and just check belts. But the main thing that we gotta do before we can start cutting the pea crop is we gotta change the modules. These right here are pretty much uh, how you change the different crops on the combine. There's a bunch of other settings and stuff, but for the peas, they thrash very easy, like super easy. It doesn't hardly take any horsepower, granted. When you have dry years like this, there's not much material out there. These combines are going to be sipping on fuel. They're not even going to hardly drink it. Now, wheat, really small kernels, peas are a lot bigger. I need to change and put the bigger ones, bigger openings, in those combines so that way the peas are able to go through the modules and go through the combine and clean it. Right now, these are set up for wheat. So they're a lot smaller, a little kind of... Uh, wires and gaps and all that good stuff. Get what I'm saying? For those that have watched this channel, you get it. All right, they're not too bad. Actually, to tell you the truth, <laughs> these things are super easy to change. You got two bolts, you fold it down, pull it out, put a new one in, put the two bolts back in, and you're done on one. Now there's gonna be four that I gotta change out on both of them. Now, to make my life a little easier, when we switch these back in for wheat, 
I've got a pallet here for bee spine. Uh, yes, this is bee spine. Okay, you know, because of the number two. And then that's Clifford. So all of these ones, I'm gonna stack them on the pallet so I have an order, which ones were in the front, which ones are in the back, because there's a little different style of modules in here, and that one as well. I'd like to get the order the same and not have to mess with it. So anyways, um, I'm gonna start pulling those off the pallet and getting an idea which ones go where. Fun, but first, coffee. I want coffee. I need coffee. There's never enough coffee. As you can tell, he's uh, he's treating himself. Ooh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, there's the left. Oh. Yeah, that's a good creamer. That is a good creamer. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna use it all, because I'm, I'm selfish like that. Protein and coffee, why not? 15 grams of protein, guys. I need it. Mm. Tasty, that is. Thanks, Dad. Yes. That's a good idea. I love it. And I'm going to make sure I put this right next to the door so that bugs and stuff can get in here and dirt and fly into it. Then I'll take a sip later. Extra protein. B-spine pretty much is ready to go to put the header on. We went through and looked at uh, the feeder house bars. There was one bent bar. Dad quickly grabbed one off the shelf. We'll bend the old one. Here he's in a bent back. But he just put a new one on just for the time being. Ooh, smells like mice in here. Mm, yucky. All right. I blew the cab out and maybe that's why it smells worse. Opened the door, took the leaf blower and Made a little bit of a, a little bit less funny thing. Oh, you guys can't see it, but there's a mouse that, oh, I just went in the shop. A little punk. Now we're going to hook onto that header. We try to keep both headers uh, paired up with the same combine. And we have ways of identifying which one goes where, because there's the same kind of header, but there's a couple things on them. Um, that we can identify and then that way we kind of know like well that was B Spine's header uh, that one's Clifford's header that happened last year this is what happened we need to do this and so we try to keep keep uh, everything fairly consistent all right I'm gonna slowly ease up into this thing and you know what let's go ahead and find a camera mount. oh there we go how's that there you go perfect like my little finesse with my knees. Set the feeder house down and slowly inch it in. There we go. First try. Nailed it. Let's put the parking brake on and then we'll start hooking things up. Huh. Need a hammer? Uh, there's a hammer right Just gonna move that one out of the way a little bit to make some room for this one. We're gonna prioritize our priority, I should say, is beast spine right now. I'm gonna make sure that this one's good to go, and then we'll start. Once this is good to go, we'll focus on Clifford. And it's kind of a little bit of a bouncing back and forth when we're working on stuff. We kind of okay, we're working on this. Oh, okay, let's go over here and work on that. Uh, okay, let's go to the other one, let's do this. It's kind of a crazy little mess, but things do get accomplished and done, and that's the key.
everybody, I want to make an announcement. So remember those cubes, the, the, the chips, the filings from the Big Bud center hinge pins, that leg arm machine? We had 40 of those made. We put them up on farmfocus.com slash Welker Farms to be sold for a charity. All the money is going to Food for the Hungry. Um, and they sold like that. And we, we put an announcement up in a video and they were just gone. And we had a lot of people email say, I'm so upset. I wanted one of those. You didn't, you didn't let us know. Or is there more? Or what's going on? Uh, so with that, we put together a hundred more of them and they're just now put up on farmfocus.com slash Welker Farms. Link will be in the description below and you guys can go pick up one of those if you'd like to put one on your desk or whatnot, whatever you want to do with it. It's up to you. It's got a little logo on it from us signed by myself, leg arms and my dad and full of filings from the series five big bud, that leg arms machine. So if you guys want a piece of that, they're now available. So go there while supplies last. This is probably the last run that we'll make of them. So from here on out, you'll have to find somebody that already bought one and, uh, See if you can get it from them. So. Also, this doesn't go to charity, but we do have a new shirt designed by Leg Arm's wife, Sarah Welker, and idea to buy my wife, Kathleen Welker. And this is the new, this land was made for you and me. I'm reading it because my screen's backwards. <laughs> so anyways, really nice shirt. I really like the design and the color and everything. So that's available too on Welker Farms at Farm Focus, so farmfocus.com slash Welker Farms. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate everything you've done for helping us get this platform, this channel to where it's at, all the fun that we get to do with it. And uh, we're excited to see what happens tomorrow. So let's get at it. All right, God bless, take care. We'll see you again, another video coming ahead.